So this is my neighbor's house. They did have their central heating, their hot water go wrong. It kept tripping the RCD, which is a little thing in the fuse box if you don't know. Basically, they lost all their electricity, they couldn't use their Wi-Fi or anything. Every time they switched it back on again, it would trip. Because my neighbor, he spends quite a lot of time abroad, he doesn't leave his family in the lurch, so he's got a British gas contract. So it's no problem, I'll call them out. So the guy came out and I happened to see the British gas guy leaving. I said, did you manage to find out what it was and he said well he said I've been there he said I've done everything I've topped up the pressure vessel I've given it a bit of a clean out I've done this I've done that and he said I can't find anything wrong now that's the problem with intermittent faults that you know when you go along sometimes the thing's working perfectly well you go away and you get a phone call an hour later so it's happened again he ended up saying to me well I've, I've done my best with it and he said we're just going to have to put it down to the mysteries of science. <laughs> and I thought, that's great. There's a difference between being employed and being self-employed because I can't go along to somebody's house, charge them a hundred quid and leave them without a result. You know, they're going to say, what am I paying you for? You kind of have to solve the problem. And I got used to that over the years. So we got an RCD that's tripping and it's something to do with the heating system. What new event has happened that's caused this? The most likely thing is there's moisture somewhere. We start looking, we're looking in the boiler. Now I didn't actually take the boiler casing off or anything like that. I just looked in the bottom for any signs of drip staining, anything you can find, discoloration of the pipes, all looks perfectly good. And as he had the boiler cover off to clean it the other day, I would have thought that he would have spotted that. So then we go around the system and the pump looks dry and there's a little plug-in connector on the end here. Doesn't seem to be anything particularly untoward with that. You know, I would be looking for signs of staining, dripping, anything like that. So there's nothing on the pipe works, all nice and clean. We've got some motorized valves. Now this is the Honeywell one. I have had trouble with these before because they put a little bit of cardboard in the back to insulate the micro switch in these from the body to keep it apart. And if they get damp, sometimes you get a little trace through on that. Doesn't seem to be wet, doesn't seem to be stained. I can take the cover off that and have a quick look at that. But before I do, let's have a look at some others. This is a different kind of motorized valve. Press the button. You can actually take these actuators off very easily. So this is the underfloor heating. So we look in the back. Ah, now straight away, it's a sign of something going on there. Just on my finger, a little bit of moisture, a little bit of something coming out of this valve here. So this is the electrics. This is the thing that turns that valve on and off and you can clearly see a bit of moisture on it. Now that is enough moisture to cause that to trip. If I were to take this cover off, which obviously the guy yesterday didn't do, look, just shaking it there. Can you see the moisture on my hand? The electrics are off, by the way. I'd never do this if the electrics were on because obviously if there's moisture in there and you put your mouth to it, it could be dodgy. But you can see as I'm blowing, it's producing more water. That could be causing the problem. Might as well do the same thing with this one. Take it off and see if there's any problem with that. Tell you what, look, telltale sign down there, right? Is a drip on the pipe that's leaking as well. Both valves got exactly the same problem. They're both leaking around that little O-ring. There's a little gland there. Quite honestly, there's not a lot you can do with this, but you're going to have to drain it to do it. Look at the discoloration on this one. Look at the amount of moisture that's coming out of there. <laughs> I'm not even having to blow through it. Look at that. The thing is full of water. So there's your British gas guy. It comes out on a Sunday afternoon. You're paying your annual fee to keep these people. That is such a simple thing, isn't it, to, to spot, really. That's the problem solved. Now, luckily, what I can do here is one thing they've got an immersion heater, so we can switch that on so they can get some hot water coming through. They didn't know whether that was causing the problem, so they didn't want to switch it on. But what I can do is I can leave these two manually open and just leave these dangling because all it will do is heat the cylinder up. There won't be any control over that cylinder in terms of regulating the temperature. So if I look at the boiler, I can regulate the temperature on the boiler, send it down to about there. And then that won't overheat the cylinder. It won't overheat the radiators. The underfloor heating we can still have on. I'm gonna take the cover off these. I've got a hot air gun at home, so I'll nip back and I'll get the hot air gun. And then I'll come back, I'll give those a little dry out, leave them dangling so they don't get wet again and leave these manually open. At least that way, they've got some heating and some hot water. They can call the guy back in 
and he can change the motorised valves for them. Again, this is diagnostics. Some people are good at diagnostics, fault finding, some people aren't. I think most plumbers and heating engineers watching this would say that was one of the most simple fault finding exercises ever. I mean, sometimes you spend hours in a place trying to find things, but I got to that within two minutes. It's where the screwdriver slips and goes through the palm of your hand, putting this much pressure on it. Look at that. Whoa. Oh, look at that. That is solid rust in there, holding it together. That goes in there. And that goes in there. Okay, so I've just isolated that. I've made it safe. This is not ideal, obviously having this dangling here. But I'm gonna to say to the customer, don't come down here. I'll wrap that up with a polythene bag and some tape or something. And then when the guy comes tomorrow from British Gas, he's just gonna put two new valves on. Send me the check. There you go firing up so it just has to go through a sequence because the power's been cut off it'll go through a little sequence now before it starts running fully 